we looked at some consequences. If you look in Ephesians 4 and 30, the Bible says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. And again, when we look at that, that term grieve, when it says grieve not the Holy Spirit, uh, it helps us to also understand that he's not, he is not an it. It cannot grieve. He is not um, a thing. He's not a force. You know, he's not, he's not the force of the universe. He is forceful, but he is person. He is divine. He has intellect. He has uh, emotion. He has feelings. He has will. And it says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Now, let's jump right in this morning. Some of the things that will grieve the Holy Spirit. And what happens when the Holy Spirit is grieved? What happens is he never leaves you. He promised that he would never leave us. But you know what happens is he shuts down. It's kind of like uh, those of you brothers who are married or have uh, a, a significant relationship with a woman. When you hurt her feelings, in most cases, she will say nothing. But she shuts down. She gets, she gets very, very quiet. She may go through the routines of doing whatever her wifely responsibilities are around the house, but quiet, quiet, quiet. No enthusiasm about it. Not a whole lot to say to you because she's what? Grieved. She's present, but she's absent at the same time. She's present, but she's absent at the same time. And this is something that women understand that they can, a woman has the thermostat of the climate of the home. And when she's grieved, she can make that house very, very cold without being disrespectful, without saying anything, without doing anything. She's present, but she's absent. And there's nothing worse than being in a home in a house with your wife when she's present but absent at the same time. And she doesn't really become present again <laughs> until you say, Bay, I'm sorry. I did X, Y, Z. I apologize. I'm sorry. And you got to go get her some flowers or something. You know, you got to. You, you. But likewise with the Holy Spirit, when he's grieved, Though he's present, he's absent. He's there with you. But at the same time, you can't, you can't sense him. You can't, he, he does not manifest himself. You don't feel his touch. You don't feel his power. You know, in worship, in worship, you, you can't feel his, he, he won't let you experience his, his glory upon you. There's nothing more miserable than having walked with the Holy Spirit and know and and having come to know his power and his touch upon your life and then grieve him and have him to pull back. He sits back and he he's present but he's absent. Let's look at some of the things that we do to grieve the Holy Spirit. Number one, bitterness. Bitterness. When you carry bitterness in your heart, I have, um, I have certain people that just bitter, they just carry so much bitterness and they want to share that bitterness with everybody else and they want other people that's close to them to be bitter with them. Bitterness will grieve the Holy Spirit. When you carry bitterness in your heart for people and see the, the, the deception is that the devil plants in our minds is that when somebody has wronged us, rightfully so, that they have done us and it's documented that they did us wrong, that we somehow have a divine right to be bitter. But the Bible commands us that just like God forgave us, we should also forgive one another. Why 
Watch this. We should all, and the Bible also talks about how a root of bitterness springs up and it troubles you. And one of the problems bitterness creates is it creates, it, it, it dilutes the, the chemistry, the dynamic between you and the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in James 1 and 20, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Bitterness leads to wrath and wrath always takes a person out of right standing with God. The wrath of man worketh not a flow. The righteousness of God. Wrath or bitterness will take me out of right standing with God. Second thing that will grieve the Holy Spirit is evil conversation. <laughs> evil conversation. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, uh, 29 and 30, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Evil, corrupt communication, gossip, gossip, lying, let me tell you something else that will grieve the Holy Spirit. Not only letting it proceed out of your mouth, but letting it flow into your ears. It takes two people to gossip. One to talk and one to be the trash can. When you submit yourself to that environment, that spirit, the Holy Spirit backs up. I do not engage in gossip. I don't even get involved with people who are telling the truth that is not edifying someone else. Because I believe if you know a truth about somebody that is in error, unless you're talking to their pastor that has to correct them, you should simply be interceding God does not bring you and make you privy to certain information relative to people's business for you to talk about it. He gives you information, gives you insight for you to intercede. You know how? Privately. When you begin to talk about people's business and you begin to gossip, you grieve the Holy Spirit. Third thing that grieves the Holy Spirit is pride. Pride. Boy, the story, my father told the story. Let me, let me read this and then I'll tell you the story. In Proverbs 6, 16 and 17, it says, These six things that the Lord hate. Boy, that's a strong word. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. First one he mentions. A proud look. My father used to tell a story about a, a, a young preacher that, um, that's right, pride goes before destruction. A young preacher that uh, was invited to preach at a great church, and boy, he was just bragging about how he was preaching at such and such church, and I guess it would be the equivalent of somebody being invited to preach at the potter's house. And he bragging, bragging, bragging about how he gonna tear him up and all of this kind of thing. And so he is, he, you know, he ascended to the pulpit with, you know, shoulders back, head high, proud, and he's speaking. And he died. Nobody was moved. Church was quiet. The text was Proverbs 6, verses 16 and 17, for those of you that were asking about the scripture. He... Stands up there and he absolutely falls flat on his face. He walked up tall, high, tall and high with his head high in the air, but he came down with his shoulders slumped and his head bowed. And when he sat down in his seat, an old preacher leaned over to him and said, 
if you had gone up the way you came down, humble, you would have come down the way you went up. When we get in pride, the Holy Spirit will lift his hand. And see, let me tell you something. Don't you fool yourself. I don't care how much Bible you know. I don't care how much of a theologian you are. I don't care how melodious your voice is. If you do not have the touch of the Holy Spirit on your ministry, you are sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. If you do not have the oil of the Holy Spirit on whatever it is you're doing, you do not have the power to be effective. So number one, we said was bitterness, James 1 and 20. Second was evil conversation, Ephesians 4, 29 through 30. Pride, Proverbs 6, 16 and 17. Number four, watch this. Doubt and unbelief grieves the Holy Spirit. Matthew 13, 58 through chapter 14 and one. Well, let me just read verse 58. He says, and he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. When the Holy Spirit is moving, especially in the corporate setting, of course, this works privately as well, but in the corporate setting of the church, the Holy Spirit is moving and you sitting there in the back, somebody's praying for miracles and you sitting in the back and you're doubting. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I believe that. You're grieving the Holy Spirit. You're grieving the Holy Spirit. If you're in a situation where your faith is being stretched and maybe it's going to a level that you know, you've not seen before, Simply sit there and say, God, you know, help my unbelief. Show me your power. Bring me to the next level. Don't express doubt and unbelief. There's, there are no limitations in God. The Holy Spirit is grieved when we doubt him. And sometimes that spirit of doubt and unbelief hinders people from receiving. The Bible says Jesus did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief, meaning he had the intention to do it. But because the people did not believe, he moved on. You know, even with your children, some of you all have children. Many of you all, in fact, have children that, that are, are in these streets and they, they're doing all kinds of stuff they have no business doing. And you're praying for them to be saved. But then when you open your mouth, you talk about he, he just like his daddy. He going to end up just like his daddy in jail. You know, he, you grieve the Holy Spirit. Never allow doubt and unbelief to come out of your mouth. I don't care what you're thinking in your head. Your head is going to always question. But never allow it to come out of your mouth. It becomes the, the material of manifestation when it comes out of your mouth. When you open your mouth with doubt and unbelief, you shut the Holy Spirit down. Watch this, number five. The fifth thing that grieves the Holy Spirit is disobedience to God's will. Disobedience to God's will. Do what God told you to do. You know, don't add to it. Don't take away from it. Just do what God told you to do. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 22 to 24, it says, And Samuel says, Hath the Lord as great delight, he's talking to Saul, in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He hath also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord. 
and thy words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Saul lets us in on something here. The main thing that causes us to disobey God is trying to please people. And it could end severely as it did with Saul. It could end in God rejecting you and demoting you. When you, when you walk in willful disobedience to God, trying to please people, you grieve the Holy Spirit and he will lift his anointing off of your life. And sometimes he'll replace you. God will have purpose certain assignments on your life, but because you won't obey, he'll lift his anointing and then he'll ultimately replace you with someone who will obey. Number six, taking credit for God's work in your life will grieve the Holy Spirit. Oh my God, and this is so common among preachers, worship leaders. How did I do tonight? You didn't do. You didn't do. Don't, don't ever take credit for what God does in your life. You know, when I lay hands on them, when I lay hands on them, they get healed. Man, you're not a healer. You're not a healer. You're not a healer. You can get sick today or tomorrow. You can't heal yourself. You're not a healer. You're an instrument that the healer may use if you remain as a vessel of honor. But when you begin to take credit for what God is doing through you, you grieve the Holy Spirit. Look what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1, 20 and 29. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. You know what my daily prayer is? As the Lord elevates me and my sphere of influence is greater, you know, I have pastors all over the country that love me and, and submit to me and call me and say, most of them call me Pop. Pop, what you think I need to do with this here? And they, you know, they honor me. My, my church family loves me and honors me. My daily prayer is, Lord, don't ever let me believe that this is Robert Charles Blake's. I believe the, I believe the key to my father's um, consistent anointing was that he always understood that this was the Lord's doing, was not him. So often, as as men and women of God, God does a small thing through us, and we begin to brag about what we did. God is jealous of his glory. He does not share it with anyone. Nobody, nobody. This is how you see men and women of God that rise and then they crash. And sometimes you say, oh, it's because they were in sin. No, man, let me tell you something. God is too merciful for that. God will cover and he will chastise and beat his son, beat his daughter up privately until they get right. I believe most of the time you see them crash because they got in pride. They actually believed that they were invincible. This is me. This is what I'm doing. Nobody can touch me. I can do whatever I want to do. They weren't only in sin. They were in pride. To credit for what God had done in their lives. God doesn't play with his glory. And then watch this, number seven. And I'm done. Living deceptively grieves the Holy Spirit. When you're a hypocrite, when you are a hypocrite, when you deceive, when you lie, when you, when you put on a false face, the Holy Spirit does not, he does not cosign, he does not cosign hypocrisy. He does not co-sign hypocrisy. Be real, man. Be real. Be, be real. Be real at all costs. Be real. Don't be fake. 
Look what the Bible says in Acts chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. Boy, I'm getting longer and longer. But Peter said, Ananias. Now, you know what happened with Ananias and Sapphira. They had a little money and they lied. They lied. Lied to Peter and the, the apostles. But Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was so, was it not that own power? In other words, if you wanted some of the money, all you do is say, I'm going to give you all X amount of dollars and I'm going to keep a certain amount. I, you, don't have, you didn't have to lie about it, Ananias. Why hast thou conceived this thing in that heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that hear these things. Boy, whenever I read that text, I say, Lord, if this were uh, to be the, the, the MO today, that when one lies in the house of God or when one robs God, uh, he would drop dead. Lord, have mercy. The undertaker would have too much work. Living deceptively will grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, tomorrow, we're going to move. We're going to, get, we're going to go a little deeper. We're going to start. We're going to talk about preparing for the outpouring. Somebody put on there earlier about teaching about uh, pursuing or running after God, running after the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's where we're getting ready to go. We're getting ready to get to that where, we, where you, you, you really begin to pursue your relationship with him. My earthly father taught us that at a young age, be real. And so my God does teach me the same thing. That's right. And it, yeah, Ananias' wife dropped dead too. He led his wife into the same thing. So tomorrow we're going to go a little deeper, talking about preparing for the outpouring. <sighs> father, I just thank you today for this time that we've had together. And Holy Spirit, we, we say good morning to you. We welcome you into our lives to have your way. Control our tongues today. Uh, give us your mind. We thank you for uh, sanctifying our appetites of the things that we would desire. We thank you and we give you permission to steer our lives that uh, we will not walk in any way that will be displeasing to the Father. Teach us today how to magnify Jesus Christ to the earth and how to glorify Christ, how to glorify the Father. Allow us today to experience your presence all day today, no matter the environment. Let us sense your presence. We feel your presence here now. And we honor you, we respect you, we submit to you. Any evil communication that might begin to come out of our mouths, make us to know it. Let us not grieve you today. Be patient with us as we may more than likely make error, but be patient with us today and show us the error of our ways that we may correct it. And anoint us afresh. We don't want to live off of yesterday's anointing. Anoint us afresh this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of... Dominate our space. Dominate our space. We surrender to you. We surrender to you. In Jesus' name. I love you all. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you for hanging in with me today. Thank you for hanging in with me today. I know many of you are having to get to work, but thank you for hanging in with me today. Anybody on with us for the first time for Morning Manor? Anybody on for the first time? If you are, just you can just type in a one and I'll know it's you. Thank you, Jesus. Boy, I feel God here today. I love you too. Hallelujah. Oh, look how many first-timers. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I hope it was a blessing to you today. This time, uh, this time is different. You know, I love my night sessions. Glory to God. Yeah, we have a lot of first timers today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love my night sessions where we talk about life. I love that. But this time here, this is the night sessions are more about us. It's about, you know, us and our issues. But this morning manna is about him. That's the difference. This this morning manna is our time with him. I love you. I love you. I thank God for you all. And my prayer for you today is that God will richly bless you. Um, don't forget to go to my YouTube channel and subscribe there. We're, we're putting up many of the periscopes there at YouTube. You can watch them at any time. And um, again, those of you in New Orleans and Houston, make it to Bible study tonight. New Orleans, 13800 Hain Boulevard, East New Orleans. 13800 Hain Boulevard, Houston, 4805 Shermire Road. This Sunday morning in Houston, I'm going to be talking about triumphing through obedience. Kind of goes back to some of what we were talking about today. Triumphing through obedience. This is the last quarter of the year. We're talking about triumph. This Sunday, we're talking about triumphing through obedience. Um, the following Sunday, we'll be talking about triumphing through the Holy Spirit. The YouTube channel is Robert Blake's. Robert Blake's. The YouTube channel is Robert Blake's. And uh, for those of you that may have the the father daughter talk scope last night.